Hello and welcome to Puzzle Master. This is the puzzle guy and in this video I will show you how to solve the Petite Box puzzle. This puzzle was designed by Asano Yamamoto from Japan and made by Pelican in Czech Republic with absolutely fantastic quality. The Petite Box puzzle was made using two different types of wood, Limba and Purple Heart. Limba was used for the frame and Purple Heart for the parts. Difficulty level of this puzzle is 9 out of 10 on a Puzzle Master's difficulty scale that runs from 5 to 10. And the goal of the puzzle is obviously to take it apart and reassemble it again. If you take a closer look at the puzzle, you will notice that it looks exactly the same from both sides. Like see here you can see there are two parts and a frame. And if you flip it, you still see two parts and a frame. Flip it again and it looks exactly the same. But if you look at, uh, at the puzzle from the side, you will see that it's actually a little bit different. But from this position, it looks like exactly the same. This puzzle has four parts and a frame and when you solve it you don't see the shape of the parts and that makes it quite difficult to solve the puzzle. You can only see that there are four parts but you don't know how they look inside and you don't know where and how you can move them next. So it makes it quite a difficult puzzle to solve and when you take it apart you still have to assemble everything back together to complete the solution and it will be quite a challenge as well. If you like the Petite Box puzzle and you want to buy it, go to puzzlemaster.ca and if you want to see the solution of this puzzle, keep watching the video. And now I will show you how to solve the puzzle. So when you start solving the puzzle, first you have to find the correct side, since as I mentioned, it looks exactly the same here and if you flip it, it looks exactly the same. Even the first move can be done on both sides, like here you can move two parts and when you, when you flip it you can move these two parts as well. But the next step is very important since after moving these two parts here you have to lift this piece up. If you can't lift the piece up like here you won't be able to lift it. That means that you have to go back and start from the other side. So you're lifting this piece up then what you can do is to grab this piece and move it one step down. Maybe I have to zoom out a little bit to make it a little bit easier for you to see what is happening. Then I can move this piece one step here. The next step will be to move this piece to the front and then this piece goes one step here with the oh these two parts they go just up as you can see there are some false moves but you don't have to go there you have to move both parts up next what we have to do is grab this bottom piece move it one step to the front and here you have to move this bottom piece one step to this direction the next step will be to move this piece down like it goes two steps down but don't let the parts uh, go down since you, you have to keep them right here and this piece goes down as well and it goes down two steps. Now you move these two parts to the front and the next step will be to grab the bottom piece move it to the front and you can remove it. Then you can remove this piece and then we have just two parts left and it will be not so hard to figure out how to remove them as well. Let's see, it goes here, you remove the first piece and then you remove the second piece. And all four parts are different, uh, so you have to pay attention on which part you use when you assemble everything back together. So this piece goes inside, then you grab another piece, put it from this side all the way to the left, then around the first piece and put it inside of the first piece like that. And you have to move both of them right here so that they stick out. Next we grab this piece, as you can see it looks like letter G, and you put it inside and keep it right here then you have to grab 
one more piece, this one. You put it inside and you put it in front of the G-shaped piece, like that. But you have to make sure that all the parts are in the correct spots, since if you move any of the parts just a little bit, the solution won't work properly. So these two parts, they are here now. Next, what we have to do is to move these parts inside, but not all the way. Just leave them one step from going all the way in. Next, this bottom piece goes up so that it sticks out a little bit. Then we move this, this piece up as well. It can be difficult to do since the puzzle is very tight and all the steps supposed to be done properly. Okay, that looks good so far. Now, what we have to do is... Hey, wait a second, something is wrong. The parts are not aligned well. Uh, as soon as the parts were aligned properly, this piece went in a correct position, so it's supposed to go right here. The next step will be to move both of these parts, I guess it is both of these parts, down. Let's see if I can do it now or no. Oh, this piece goes inside. And then we can move both of these parts down. Then... What will be the next step? Maybe they don't supposed to go both down. Wait a second. Let me try to remember what will be the next step. If they go down, I won't be able to move any of the parts. Oh no, I can move them. If they go down, then this piece goes one step in, and this goes in. Then we can move this piece one step. Here you have to move this piece inside, then this goes inside, and you move these two parts in, and the puzzle is solved. So quite a challenging a solution. You're supposed to do only exact steps in order to solve it, since there are a lot of false moves here, and you can very easily uh, fall in a trap, but you have to uh, be very careful if you want to solve the puzzle. If you like the Petite Box puzzle and you want to try some other amazing puzzles designed by Asanori Yamamoto, go to puzzlemaster.ca. Thank you for watching. See you next time.